get the language right tonight. Shlomo, happy Sabbath. Um, all right, today's topic is going to delve into what Israel needs the most and lacks the most. That will be order. It's an acronym. Order means ordered righteously during end time restoration. Ordered righteously during end time restoration. Order. We're gonna delve into how um, Israel today is setting forth the precedent of being a disciplined and ordered and unified nation of people, which we have not been for hundreds of years due to forced assimilation, forced persecution, scattering the diaspora of our people, scattered abroad. We are reaching the stage now where people are starting to notice us, people are starting to gain knowledge of this truth. I was at work the other day. Um, we were all over in the, in the lunch, I guess you say facility room, and uh, the lady says, yeah, today's a holiday, it's a Jew's holiday. And the sister looks at her and goes, no, it's a Jewish holiday. Jewish. I'm like, wow. Okay. Jewish. And she emphasized on ish. So she knew that ain't no real holiday. And she's in the world. So I already see this truth is spreading beyond our expectations. Um, the most High will not allow us to see how far it's spreading because he doesn't want us to become arrogant or egotistical. So he'll have us go out there and teach and spread the word. And the, the, wind, the wind bloweth where, as Christ said, the wind bloweth where it listeth. I mean, it goes where it has to go, it never goes out void. That Memphis march, that milestone march, was a milestone. That thing received them there something point, point millions of views, thousands of shares. You got celebrities like D.L. Hughley, you said? D.L. Hughley, yeah, yeah. Reggie Bush, football player, Ebro, Hondi Seven. The advisory show. Um, someone else. The advisory. The advisory show, brother him, but it on YouTube. He's been watching secretly, of course. He's a modern day Nicodemus. Um, you have celebrities coming up to us recently today. Today, yeah. Today, a celebrity who was um, with Will Smith and part of the group, Will Smith and um, DJ Jazzy Jeff. He produced uh, Parents of Parents Just Don't Understand. That brother, he wrote that he produced that. That's interesting. Grammy Award, Grammy Award with the brothers. Watching us for a year, getting his house in order, came up to us. Um, and so also we'll see him. Ready Rock C. Ready Rock C. Some of y'all brothers who know who that is. I mean, I know that is. I didn't know that was. Y'all put me on. So, okay, now I'm yeah. here. I know the song. Parents yeah. just understand. I know the song. But a lot of celebrities are coming up. Um, a lot of them are coming up. Um, and they're learning this truth. And some of them are a bit afraid. So they're, they're kind of being, you know, subtle with it. Like, you know, like, like the Kendrick Lamar's. They're being very subtle with it. You know, they're bringing drop a little jewels here and there, get a power. They drop a little jewels here and there that'll help us test the truth. And it's, and it's for the truth regardless of how it was brought out. It's still a help, it still helps regardless. So, one of the things that Israel is most attracted to is order. When they saw us out there in Memphis, and that order and that uniformity, and I wasn't even, we didn't even rehearse that. We just did it off the form of fly. I was just, mm -hmm. Captain's is on point, Captain Shem is doing his thing, Captain Anaya. All of them out there, ordering the men, 800 plus men ordered from different states. In one place, an order like that, that, that set a major, major um, uh, example for our people to see that it's possible. What happened a long time ago can be done again. So this class revolves around that. We're going to open up with Psalm 50 verse 16. 
Psalms 50, verse 16. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 16. But unto the wicked, God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Now this is referring to Edom, our wicked brother, um, wicked uncle, really, a wicked uncle, um, and how he took the word of God from us and reintroduced it to us through his own ideology, his own theology, which which is now today modern Catholicism, well, Roman Catholicism, Baptist, Baptist, Pentecostal, Jehovah Witness, Methodist, Seventh Day Adventist. All of that nonsense is his is him declaring our covenant in his mouth. We don't belong to him. Go ahead. Sin, thou hatest instruction. Because the so-called white man, the heathen, this white man, he hates off, he hates instruction, he hates the laws of God. He's in complete opposition to the Bible. That's why he's called Satan. He is completely adverse, he's the adversary. He's adverse to everything the Bible says to do. Go ahead. And cast this my words behind him. He, he'll preach it, but he don't want to apply it. Go ahead. When thou sawest a thief. Then thou consentest with Yeah, he saw Columbus come over here and he commissioned it. And he consented, though, you gonna kill, uh, uh, enslave the people? Good. They got gold over there? Good. Take it, rob them. They consented with thieves. Go ahead. And has been partaker with adulterers. Right, with, wicked, with wickedness. Get with fornicators. Go ahead. Thou givest thy mouth to eat. Adulterers go into the men raping our women. He's been coming into our land and raping our sisters, raping our mothers, our daughters, our aunts and nieces. They're adulterers. And the, and the white man and these heathen, they consent to that. They were okay with that. They didn't care. The raping and pillaging. Go ahead. And thy tongue frameth deceit. No, thou givest thy mouth. Read again. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Then they turn around and slander us and say we're evil and lazy and shiftless. When they're behind the condition we're in in the first place. Go ahead. And thy tongue frameth deceit. Yeah, religions, politics, philosophies. Go ahead. Thy sinners and speakers against thy brother. Right. You should have speak against your brother. I mean, it would be Jacob. Go ahead. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. Your brother. Same thing. Go ahead. These things hast thou done. And the Lord said, these things I watched you do. I watched you do these things for a long time. And I watched you do it now. Go ahead. And I kept silent. And I didn't say a word. Let you, do your, let you do your dirt. Let you do your evil. And I sat back and watched because Israel had it coming. I warned them of this. They didn't listen, so I let it go on. Go ahead. Thou thoughtest that I was all together such a one as thyself. Because you did it and got away with it. You thought because you got away with it and did it. I'm like you. I'm your God. I look like you. That was your that was your thought process. Go ahead. But I will reprove thee. But I'm gonna correct you and make it known I, I, I'm not for you and I do not look like you. Go ahead. And set them in order before thy eyes. And do what? And set them in order before thy eyes. And I'm gonna set them in order either. I'm gonna set them, us, Israel, Jacob, I will set them in order before thy eyes. And the world saw that in Memphis. They saw it. On a large scale. And that wasn't even our numbers. That, 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 that was the tip of the iceberg with our numbers. It was thousands deep. That was just 800 and plus. So you know, Edom was like, damn, these guys are about. They got blacks and Hispanics among them too? Oh, man. Are they just a black thing? Oh, um, different colors. Oh, man. They all just funny. They all just said, come here, Captain Oshawa. Come here, Captain Oshawa. Come here, talk. Explain who you are, Claude. That throw them off. They can't say it's a black thing. <laughs> so I thought the window. That line was full of all kinds of Americans and Hispanics. They ain't no longer a black. You ain't no BHIs up here. Just Israelites. Keep it simple, short and simple. Israelites, that's it. You don't need any uh, interest on that. Any redundancy. Redundancy on that. Uh, read on. Who so offered now? No, 22. Verse 22. Now consider this. You that forget God. Lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Right, so that's what the white man has done. The heathens have done. Particularly in this verse, Edom, this chapter. Edom, they forgot that we had a God that defended us. They forgot that. Because they, because they, they thought what? That we were all together, and he, the most high, was like them. So they believed we were doing this to, their, to his people, and he ain't saying nothing. I guess it's okay. <laughs> Let's do some more damage. Let's give them a swimming sports. Let's uh, corrupt their music. Let's change their fashion around. Let's uh, corrupt their women. Turn the women against them. Hey, God ain't watching. He, he ain't answering. Okay? Let's keep doing it. Put some drugs in their community. Flood them with drugs. Separate their families. Throw them in prison. Let's see how far we can go. 
and they still press, they're still pushing the envelope, like little kids pushing the envelope. Uh, okay, he ain't looking. Okay, he ain't looking. Keep poking his real. It's okay. After a while, most of them get tired of them. After a while, we get our stuff together. No more of that. And they see it. They know what's coming. Habakkuk three verse one. Habakkuk three and one. Habakkuk chapter three verse one. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shigunoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Read again, so we go through again. What was in there? O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. Thy work is us. His work is us. That's why it goes to restoration. Revive means to restore something that was once around before. Revive. Restore. Okay, read again. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. Okay. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. In wrath, so the most is making, our, making his work known in the midst of these years, these last days, these last years. Okay, these last days, he's making his work known. He's making, it, making us hard to, hard to hide now. He's, he's sort of been concealing us Blackballing us from television, from radio. Now you can't hide us no more. Now we're in the news. We are internationally being televised now. We are in on now and the public news. You can't hide us no more. The truth is spreading. It's spreading too far out and wide. Ezekiel 37 and 10. Ezekiel 37. You guys are going to find out later on in time that you're living in Bible prophecy. Everything we do is biblical. Everything that we've done, that we do and continue to do, is of the Lord. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, and exceeded great arm. Yeah. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. The what? And the breath came, in, uh, came into them. The breath? came into them. The them is us, Israelites. Go ahead. And they lived. And when the breath came into us, we lived. This goes back to what? Reviving. Revival. Reviving. Revival. Restoration. Restitution. Whatever word you want to use. It's the same thing being said over and over and over again. Revive thy work. Read again. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. Go ahead. And they lived. And they and we lived. Go ahead. And stood up and upon. On, and we stood up. Because for a long time we've been trodden down, walked on, spit on, holes down, beat down, dogs hit on us. For a long time that took place. Downtrodden. But now we're starting to rise up and acknowledge who we are. According to the Bible, whether we're in the truth or not. Brothers are starting to take people are starting to take notice of us. They're starting to take notice of us. And what is going on? Go ahead, read again. And stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. In that Memphis, that was an army. Then that was an exceeding great army. Uniformity, discipline, order, structure, all that was seen. Our people love to see that stuff. Because we're not used to that. We're not used to seeing brothers organized in such a manner. Especially various so-called nationalities. Pseudo nationalities have given us to see all of them in one line like that, walking and marching through them streets. That was incredible. That was an amazing experience. Those of you who missed it, I apologize to you. Those of you who were there, you lived. You, you did. You lived. You were involved in a freaking. I, I can't even put the words for it. A amazing experience. Monumental experience. Thank you. Monumental experience. People, people, walk, people are following us. So if you watch the video, you see on YouTube videos of them watching us from rooftops, videotaping us with their phone, following us. The news guy had his camera, he was running by the, running down the line. It was like it was like CGI almost. Like it was real. It was thousands, it was a bunch of purple and gold down the street, blocking the traffic. March, it was amazing. It was an amazing thing to see. And I tell you now, our, our people took notice. Most importantly, no, most so least importantly, our enemies took notice also. Most importantly, our people saw, but least importantly, the nations took notice. They don't understand what you're in. You are against the world. You are a world within a world. They don't understand that. 
we are, I'll say it again, we are a world within a world. That's why oftentimes brothers and sisters tend to find themselves becoming depressed and miserable because you live in a world that's outside of your own. You have to be able to condescend your mind to the stupor of this world. Some people in this world are simple as hell. The world in itself is revolves around simplicity, revolves around stupidness. So you gotta dumb yourself down almost to nonsense. Every day, day in and day out. You gotta pretend it's, you know, entertain certain conversations that's really stupid as hell. It's just dumb. You know, you're about them, them Yeezys. Ugliest things I've ever seen. Four hundred dollars. Simplicity. And brothers go out and buy them. Simplicity. I can't sit there and say, yeah, we should buy this and now I'm a bad guy at work. It's like, oh, okay, that's nice. Gotta dumb down for it. Gotta remain civil. But I'm telling you, in the world where we are a world within a world. I want to read that in history. I want to show you that in history. That we were acknowledged as a world within a world. Nothing new. What is that? Oh. Read again. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. We want to do the breath. And the breath came into them. Just give me Psalms. No, Psalms. Uh, three and get this. Look at it. Yeah, so, um, like in the Memphis milestone, um, I'm not sure you understand the extent and the levels in which it reached and the places in which it reached. Um, like I was talking to Dean Adon um, briefly this, uh, this afternoon. We was in Newark last week and you had a guy stop the car in the middle of the streets in a busy downtown Newark in the middle of the street and he's looked at us like this. He's like, yo! Yo, we're looking at him, I thought he was on drugs. I, I, look, I thought, I was like, yo, this guy's on Molly or something, but that wasn't the case. He saw the Memphis milestone. We have a lot of people pulling over the car and looking at, just looking at us as if they've seen us before. But that's not the case is that they've seen it on the news. They've seen it on the news. They've seen it on YouTube. They've seen it on World Star. They've seen yeah. it everywhere. And one individual, just one page alone on Facebook, was able to reach over seven million. And that's just one person. And you have another person, five million, mm -hmm. and it's over sixty thousand shares between the two of them. So look at the numbers we reached. The most I was able to take one event, one march, and reach, I'll say, easily over 20, 30, 20 to fifty million people. Easily, if you really, if you really look at the numbers, that's how many people we reach. And you know, of course, if you go to Chicago, you said we'll be there soon. He said, come to Chicago. He said, we'll be there soon. We'll go there next. They need it. Proverbs 3 and 22. <coughs> Proverbs 3. Let me look at it. 21. Proverbs 3, 21. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 21. My son, let not them depart from thy eyes. Them is the burden to burn to wisdom. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Go ahead. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. They shall be life to thy soul and grace to thy neck. They shall be life unto thy soul. That's the, the breath that was entered into Adam in Genesis. That's referring to wisdom and discretion. Adam was given wisdom and understanding. That's the breath that entered into us. That's entering into us now. Go back to Ezekiel again. So the thought is the loss. Book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. So that breath is referring to the word of God, wisdom, understanding. The breath. Get Revelation 11, verse 11. Let's see if John, let's see what John told the exact, all the prophets are showing the same exact thing. Or more than others, and all, and each each piece they were shown uh, was part of a puzzle that we all to put to, put together. Referring to the same exact thing. The Book of Revelation, chapter eleven, verse eleven. Read verse ten. Verse ten. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry. Rejoice over us because we'll be on the bottom, we'll be in slavery. Go ahead. And sin and shall send gifts one to another. The gifts was us. Go ahead. Because these two prophets, these two prophets are the two kingdoms of Israel. Because remember, Israel was once twelve tribes. They were divided into two kingdoms or two nations, or referred to as two prophets. Go ahead. Tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Go ahead. And after three days and a half, 
The spirit of life from God entered into them. These are happens 350 years, okay? That's when you start to rise up around the, around the early 1970s, <coughs> 60s, you start seeing brothers and sisters rise up, seeking identity, seeking wisdom, seeking knowledge of self. That's why it's three, three, three days and a half, it's referring to 350 years. From 1619 to 1960s, 70s. You count that time. That's when Israel starts to really rise up and seek identity. Then from the pan, that was the, that was the um, you had SP, um, S, SNCC, you had SNCC, that's the SNCC, you had SNCC, then you had AIM, but no, the, but the first was Panthers. Yes, Panthers. You had SNCC, Panthers, then other, then you had Young Lords, followed behind that, then the Chicano movement with the Brown Berets, then AIM, they were all inspired, all the kings were inspired by the Panthers. They were inspired by them, and that's, 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 that's sort of a, a chain reaction, okay? Go ahead. So we start to seek identity. Go ahead. It was also, I can't, I can't leave them out, Malcolm X, Nation of Islam. They were part of that as well, that movement of seeking identity as well. Same thing. Go ahead. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. And what? And great fear fell upon them which saw them. And great fear fell upon them would be the other nations. Great fear fell upon them which saw us. That's uh, them is us. Go ahead. Stood upon their feet goes back to Ezekiel where it said, Stood up, stood, up, stood up on their feet, a great exceeding army. Same, the exact same thing. Okay? Um, read 11 again. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. The spirit of life goes back to that breath of life back in Ezekiel 37 and 10. It's called, it's called the spirit of life. Go ahead. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And great fear fell upon them because our people had, had, had a was seeking identity, but the wisdom was not quite there yet. The application of God's laws is not quite there yet. It was just, a, they had the identity, they were getting to that, but they were not yet applying God's laws. But, but that, even that alone, them being in order and organization like that, that struck fear into the hearts of the heathens, which is how Cointelpro was formed. J. Edgar Hoover, and all the other FBI informants, and the CIA, and all of them started coming around, so okay, we gotta do something about these Negroes, man. They're a problem. Remember, Cointel Pro was a, was a counterintelligence, pro, counterintelligence program set up to stop any impending black messiah from rising up. That's their fear. Any type of black charismatic man or leader that can unify the Negroes together must be dismantled by any means necessary. Whether we use their own or do it ourselves. And they were successful in doing that. Now the next was taken out. Martin was taken out, Fred Hampton was taken out, Marcus Garvey was departed, was de 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 departed, deported, departed afterwards. Left. Okay, a, a variety of young, um, um, Black Panthers are also dismantled as well. Prison. Drugs, imprisonment, young lords, and they, 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 they um, instituted feminism in there, amongst them, feminism went into there. Nonsense going on. All of them government jobs, Hey, hey, get a government job. You'll be all right. Be a news reporter. Geraldo Abreu was one of the young lords. You see how he is now. He was one of them. So that was uh, what they did. And they saw as this great fear fell upon them, they had to set up countermeasures to assure that those kind of things don't happen again. You can't stop God, though. You can't. That's why in Psalm, it said earlier in Psalm 55, it says, those that forget God. They forgot. You have a God. Because they feel that they're God. So called white man in particular. Jump to verse 18. Verse 18. And the nations were angry. And the nations, we read earlier that they were fearful. But then the fear turned to what? Read again. And the nations were angry. Why? Go ahead. And thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged. And that thou should give us, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophet. Give us the kingdom. Go ahead. And to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. What nation destroys the earth? Is it the Arabs that destroy the earth? Japanese? Chinese? Any invention that was used to destroy the earth by other nations outside of white folks, they learn it from white folks. Animals going extinct. Negroes don't kill. We don't, we don't kill killer whales. I don't see Tyrone on the boat trying to kill, hunt, hunt killer whales. We don't do that. We don't cut down thousands of trees. We don't do that stuff. We don't pollute the air. That's not us. 
One nation does that. One nation alone now be the so-called white man. That's what he does. He's the destroyer of the earth. That's what he does. It's not a racist thing. It's facts. Animals go extinct because of him. Tigers go extinct. Lions go extinct. People damn near go extinct because of him. Then they go, oh man, let's do a foundation to save the whales. You kill the whales. Foundation from who? Yourself? <laughs> Wisdom of Solomon 5 and verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labor. So that's us right now. We stand in great boldness, going back to stood up a great exceeding army. Same thing being said again. Read again. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. The heathens, go ahead. And made no account of his labor. And didn't take us seriously. Because remember, you had many movements that were, the Israelites were around during that time of the 60s. We were around. But we were very, very small. Islam was very, very big. The race of Islam was huge. It was, they had numbers, they had the order, the uniformity, they had all of that. But the laws of God and nationality was not, was not involved. And so the most I could not prosper that movement. Because us being Israel was not instituted, and us being and us keeping the laws of God were not instituted, so the most had to move that out of the way. It's around, but it's not as powerful as it was before. Black Panther, same thing. They, they didn't believe in the Bible. They said, oh, that's white man's book. We, know, we, know, we believe in, he read books like uh, Art of War or um, Karl Marx. I think it was Mark, Karl Marx? Art of War. No, no, not that book. but some other book he read. He was more into philosophies and different things. Um, U.P. Newton. He was more into that. He was more into like political, stuff like that. Military, he was more into that. He was less out of the Bible, more into philosophical, um, warfare. And it, it was it was powerful um, for the moment it was around because he was he, he, they, they were organized, they were structured, they had food um drives. They gave they, they also had um, they had uh, neighborhood watches. They were very very in instrumental when, when they were around. I cannot knock them fully. They were very much instrumental when they were around. But over time, the most I said, I didn't, I'm not done with this. This is you. This is all you. I gotta move it. I got to bring Israel in eventually. And the Israel is that small mustard seed. Now we're getting the sprout now. We're starting to grow now. We're branching out. Read again. Verse, they, verse 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. It was earlier in Revelations. The nations in, in great fear fell upon them which saw them. Go ahead. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Right. Go ahead. So far beyond all that they looked for. They didn't believe that we were teaching this truth. Go ahead. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. Now, Psalm is speaking about, or well, an allegory is referring to Christ. But it's also going into those who follow Christ. We're going to treat the same cup he drank from. So it's referring to Christ as well as disciples. Read again. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision. Who we made we who we hated, made fun of, go ahead. And a proverb of reproach. We mocked him, go ahead, or mocked her, go ahead. We fools accounted his life madness. You guys are in a cult, you guys are psychos. Y'all crazy, go ahead. And his end to be without honor. And you guys don't do nothing. What are you doing? Wearing boom, boom, funny costumes and standing in the street. You ain't do nothing important. Go ahead. How is he numbered among the children of God, and his lot is among the saints? Yeah. Therefore have we erred from the, the way of truth, and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us. And the sun of righteousness, righteousness rolls not upon us. So there will come a time when the nation is going to be not, as well as the two-thirds of our people are going to realize, damn, we were all this time, we mocked them, we were wrong. We were wicked as we were with me with evil as hell. They're going to see Christ show up here. And, and grab us up, they're going to be staying there burning. They're going to realize, damn, man, all that time I, I heard him talk to in the street, I ain't listen. Next verse, let's read again. Verse, next verse. Verse 7. We weary ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. No water, no wisdom, go ahead. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known. It. Right. So that's going to happen in time. Now, what I want to show y'all is that we are living out Biblical prophecy, we are, everything that we do is of the Lord. Let's get that dictionary, that old dictionary. What year is it, Elpis suggests? Uh, 1847. It's an 1847 
Bible Dictionary. 1847. You know what we were in 1847? <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't sitting up here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a shack on a hill somewhere. Now I'm going to start from when it says, when it, you can read, start from when it says, uh, when the ignorant notions, yes, the line is, the line is that. When the ignorant notions, when the ignorant Now, I'm sorry, this, this is a glossary, this is, this is the, the definition of preaching, okay? This is, un, this is under, the, under the definition of preaching, okay? When the ignorant <coughs> notions of pagans, the vices of their practice, and the idolatry of their pretended worship were in some sad periods incorporated into the Jewish religion. Stop. So Israel began to assimilate into heathen culture and try to bring adopt heathen culture into our own. But you have men of God rise up and go, no, that's wicked. We should be doing this. Read it, read on. By the, incorporated into the Jewish religion by the princes of that nation. Our own leaders. That would be as sharp then as Jesse Jackson is today. Go ahead. The prophets and all the seers protested against this apostasy. And they were persecuted for so doing. They were, we were persecuted for doing that, for standing up against it. Go ahead. Shemaiah preached to Rehoboam, the princes, and all the people at Jerusalem. Jump down to what goes on the line. Some of them opened schools. So uh, this what Israel did. This is what the prophets did. They opened schools. That's what Israel does now. That's what we're doing now. We open schools there. Some of them opened schools or houses of instruction. Or held the schools in their houses until they were big enough to get a school. Like we're doing. Go ahead. And there to their disciples, they taught the pure religion of Moses. And they taught the pure religion. You know what pure religion means? It means there was no Christianity in there, no modern Christianity. All this is to be saved, Christmas, Easter. That wasn't taught. We taught the Bible in its purest form. Word for word, precept upon precept, line upon line, there a little, there a little. Purest form. Go ahead. At Naif, in the suburbs of uh, Ramah, there was one where Samuel dwelt. So Samuel dwelt. Go ahead. And there was one at Jericho. So there was a school where Samuel dwelt. There was one in Jericho. Go ahead. And a third at Bethel. And one at Bethel. Go ahead. To which Elijah and Elisha often resorted. So they would go to the schools too. <laughs> and visit the schools. The leaders would go and visit the schools. So we had schools that were set up. We set up schools throughout these areas. Elijah and Elisha would visit. It's on a Samuel would visit. And they would mentor, they would mentor the prophets. These are the sons of the prophets. This is referring to. Jump down. No, we don't, we don't, we don't. It's more. Then the, the people went on Sabbath days. They would, they would go to these places on Sabbath days. Go ahead. And at new moons. And at feast days. And receive public lessons of piety and morality. Ain't that what we doing now? That's right. Doing the exact same thing. Go down, watch. Watch this. Many of the discourses were preached in camps. Stop. Many of the discourses were preached in camps. In camps. In camps. Go ahead. And courts. And in courts. In streets. Where? In streets. Where? In streets. In the streets. Go ahead. Schools, cities, villages, sometimes with great composure and coolness. So some taught in these areas with great composure and coolness. Calm, trying to deal with you, civil, <laughs> and so forth. You know, I, brothers, I apologize. Three brothers that teach like that. I always get on brothers. You know, some brothers in here, I'm not going to point to brothers. Brothers just feel like I get on them. So I'm going to let you teach the way you teach also, right? Also on ice. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So everyone had their own teaching style. Watch, you know. And other times with vehement action and rapturous energy. And some were vicious as hell. Lava. <laughs> oh, Lava used to be. Captain. Lava. Captain, you got the ship? No. <laughs> Oh man, Kevin Jarrell too. No, getting worse. Uh, <laughs> with this vehement action and rapturous, rapturous energy. Go ahead. Sometimes in a plain, blunt style. And sometimes in a plain and just straight to the point style. You're gonna die, man. Most of them kill you. You will get it out. This will be nice at raw. This <laughs> raw. Go ahead. At other times. And all the magnificent pomp of Eastern allegory. And all the magnificent, we had pride in what we taught. In Eastern allegory. Go ahead. 
on some occasions, the preachers appear in public with. But where? Appear where? Appear in public. They appear. Listen, the preachers appear in public. Watch this. With visible signs. Ha! How old is this dictionary again? 1847. We had signs at camp. This is not in the Bible, by the way. But it's in us to do it. We've been doing it for hundreds of years. They had visible signs. Watch, you know. With implements of war. With, 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 with war. Implements of war. Things are going to happen. We show, we show nuclear bomb explosions and the sign, whatever. Some kids do that. Go ahead. <coughs> with yokes of slavery. We had signs of yokes of slavery. We would wear yokes to people. Listen, this is going to happen to us. See this change right here? This is going to happen to us. Go ahead. Or something adapted to their subject. Or something that would adapt to that topic. We had uh, the world, John 3, 16 sign, the 12 shot sign, the, what else, the um, slave, slave trade sign, Jacob and Esau sign. sign, that's the world sign. We had signs for each subject. Read again. On some occasions, the preachers appear in public with visible signs, with implements of war, with yokes of slavery, or something adapted to their subject. Go ahead. They gave lectures on these. Well, we go. We gave lectures. They gave lectures on these. Where? In the schools and cities and so forth. Go ahead. Held them up to view. And they held them up to people to see. So the 12 chops chart thing, they're arguing that. I don't understand what's happening. They're reading it here. Go ahead. Gird them on. And they were aware. They put the yokes on. Go ahead. Broke them in pieces. Or, or, or illustrate or break them. Or be, be got free from slavery. Go ahead. Rent, the, rent their garments. Oh, rent them. No, that, that was, that's biblical. Bring our clothes. They had anger. Go ahead. Rolled in the dust and endeavored by all the Go up. by all the methods they could devise. And they would do these things by any method they could use to devise. Go ahead. Agreeably to the customs of their country. Agreeably to the customs of the country they were in. So based upon where they were, they were teaching that style where they were. As long as it was not against the custom of the land. Go ahead. To impress the minds of their artists. To impress the minds of those who are watching the, the audience. Go ahead. With the nature and importance of their doctrine. With the nature and the importance of the doctrine. You're living Bible prophecy. You're living it. So if you have any doubts, there you go. 1800 dictionary. This is written when you was in slavery. This is a book that was written when you was in slavery. When you were in slavery, 1847. We got, uh, allegedly freed in what, 1865? That's 15 plus years later, seven, almost 20 years later. Well, not, not really. Still safe, but you get my point. So this shows you these these scholars put this book together, and they, they, there was records, obviously, of us doing these things, holding up signs, using illustrations, yokes of iron on our necks, ripping them off, putting them on, uh, showing, um, teaching people, opening schools. Another book said we gave our pamphlets and flyers. What more proof do you need? So these nations are fearful because they know they have our history. They have records of us doing this thousands of years before. Remember, they destroyed our minds. We should remember these things. There is a God. That's why. I'm going to have them. Okay, you're going to get rid of slavery. Yeah, okay. Yeah, make them forget what they are. All right, applaud them. Okay. Can you years later? All right. You get Israel now. We'll go up and teach them. Make great signs again. Even like, damn, didn't we destroy them before? I didn't know how to do this. Who taught them to do this? Signs again? Schools again? <laughs> Who taught them this? The most I taught us. He said, oh, enough of that. Time to rise up. Get this Bible a true book now. Time to get up. Enough sleeping for you. You haven't sleeping long enough. You got to realize, uh, remember the book of Job chapter 33, when it says he instilled their instructions in their mind. Mm -hmm. A lot of thoughts that, a lot of um, and, um, creative thoughts that we think that are our own, they're not our thoughts. It's the most high still in the instructions for us to do these things. Today you're going to get up and you're going to make a sign. Mm -hmm. Today you're going to get up and you're going to read that book. Today you're going to do this. So he's still, he's, he's directing us in a path in which he wants us to go. And that's why all of us are the same. Do you think that this is out of your own type of direction in life? Because everybody has some type of direction in life they believe in which they're going. But no, the most high is the one that turns our direction in a place where he wants to go. And that's why in the school, that's why you camp one on one, you build the signs and we're lecturing the school system. It's the same life again. Yep. Nothing new is under the sun. Yep, exactly, exactly what that says. Matthew 5 verse 14. Matthew 5 verse 14. Matthew 5 verse 14. 
book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So on this troop, you're going to find yourself standing out among the rest. You're going to stand out. People are going to, know, people are going to notice you and go, he's not like everybody else. He's different. Or she's different. You're going to get that. Read again. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The light of the world is referring to you shining, you being that example. You applying the commandments of God, you're going to stand out. She's wearing dresses, she's wearing pants. He got a beard in his face, he got some things in his shirt. What's that? You're going to stand out. A city that's set on the hill cannot be hid. Go ahead. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush. You don't have a candle and light it and just hide it. <laughs> You have this so you can see in the darkness. This is a dark world we're living in. We live in a world of darkness. So you got to be that light that shines. Go ahead. And, and, a, and a light in a dark place is attractive. People are going to follow it. Go ahead. But on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. What's the light going into? Hold that, get Proverbs 6 and 23. What's the light referring to? Let's get Proverbs 6, verse 23. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp. It goes back to what? A candlestick. Go ahead. And the law is light. And the law is the light. Go ahead. And reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So the laws of God, that is the light. That is referring to in Matthew 5, verse 14 and down. That's that light that shines in a dark place. That cannot be hid. Because when you apply that law, the commandments, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. You don't want to stand out, you're in the wrong place. You're going to stand out. You cannot hide. You cannot blend in. People are going to notice you. People are going to know who you are in time. As this truth progresses, and if you're involved in wickedness, after a while, you're going to get put out. You're going to get put out there. You can't hide forever. I saw a lot of, a lot of Israelites that hate wearing fringes. They know about wearing these fringes. I can't be a nigga no more. I can't go to the strip club throwing, freaking making it rain with fringes on. I look still look retarded. Matt, you got a prostitute up in the passenger seat. Ready? Hey, you in this one? You got fringes on. Damn, get out, get out of the car. Get out. No too much. That's why they don't wear fringes. Give us the team. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush, but on a candlestick, and give it light unto all that are in the house. The house of where? The house of Israel. Go ahead. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. Go ahead. That they may see your good works. That they may see your good works. Why? Because there's a light. Back in verse 14, you are the light of the world. What world? The world of Israel. Because we are a world within a world. Go ahead. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Read verse 16 again. Let your light so shine before men. Uh-huh. That they may see your good works uh -huh. and glorify your Father which is in heaven. They may repent and follow they can follow behind your example. You may bring them in. You may win them over. That's how you glorify your Father which is in heaven. You may win them over through your example. Some of you have done that in here. Won people up in here by your example. Let your light so shine. Get 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4. First Corinthians two verse four. The book of First Corinthians chapter two verse four. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. On my own doctrine, go ahead. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power. But the what? But in what? But in demonstration of the spirit and of power. We want to deal with this, the word demonstration. Demonstration goes back to being an example. People have to see. You have people run their mouth and go, you guys are teaching a false doctrine. You guys are teaching uh, this and that and the third. They themselves have not demonstrated anything that they believe to be true to go against what we teach that they believe is false. They run their mouth and they have not shown an ounce of demonstration to show how it should be done if we're wrong. Because the most high is not dealing with them. Whether it be a Christian, they don't, or, or, or uh, uh, Egyptologists, whatever, they don't have any, anything to show for their works. Yeah, man, you guys follow that Bible. White man wrote that book. Okay, well, let's follow the book you follow. Let's follow the book of the day. Let's see the, let's see the change in people's lives with that book. No demonstration show mine. That is garbage. You just want to sound deep. There's no power in that nonsense. The, the Bible brings forth examples 
And that Memphis milestone was a demonstration. That was literally a demonstration of men being put in uniform, put in order, structure, discipline. That was a demonstration of spirit and of power. Read again. And my speech and my preaching was not with the Tyson words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. You know what? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. I showed you earlier in the dictionary what Israel was doing in ancient time. What Samuel, what Elijah, what Elisha was doing, setting up schools, holding up signs in the streets, teaching in public. That's not our wisdom. Our forefathers have been through that for years. We didn't know that. We find these books are like, wow, we were doing this, they were doing this. This is the Bible. Read again. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Right, we, we did the same thing. Demonstration was the signs, yokes of iron. We did we gave visible signs. That was demonstration. Rent our clothes, roll in the dust. We did these certain we did certain things. We would illustrate to the people to show them the importance of what we were saying to them. Go ahead. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Go ahead. But in the power of God. But in the power of God. All right. Let's get First Thessalonians one and five. The book of First Thessalonians, chapter one, verse five. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. Power and spirit. Like said in Corinthians, go ahead. And in the Holy Ghost. The law, go ahead. And in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. So, the Bible came not in word only, but also by in power and by example. The example. By the example. Read on verse 6. And ye became followers of us. Of the disciples, including Paul, go ahead. And of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. So that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. By them following the disciples, they themselves also became examples. Lights that shine in dark places. What are dark places? Places of our captivity. Whether it be here, Africa, Iraq, Iran, Syria, Philippines, Suriname. Venezuela, Guatemala, wherever we are, those are dark places ruled by dark forces. All right, which will be heathens. Now, I want to get, show me the um, group me picture, the group me picture of um, brother for being embarrassed. Not do this. This is by this is a, a, a Facebook image of Officer Sampson from um, Detroit. And I want to read what it says in Baltimore. This is a brother that's in the world that knew him. Now go to go, go down to the picture of who he is. We're talking about go up, go up. That's Samson right there. That's the elder right there now. That's the Memphis March again. So a brother that's in the world that knew Samson when he was in the world saw this footage, all right? And commented on Samson and, how he, and what he knew him before. Hashtag great demonstration. You have a testimony. Go up. Right here. It says, peep, peep, I've never seen a lot, I've seen a lot of people from different org organizations, et cetera, et cetera, being mad disrespectful under the video and photos of YURC's demonstration in Memphis. My thing is this, you're entitled to feel how you feel, there's really no sweat. However, it won't be tolerated on my line, I mean his own, just his folks. My little homie that's pictured with Elder Below is a guy I know from the streets. A little bad guy, he was one of the worst type. I didn't know him as that. Oftentimes, I would try to traject a warm current and positivity in this direction because I was certain he'd be dead before 25. I did that to no avail. I was unsuccessful. But whatever it's worth, these brothers were able to help him do a 180, straighten himself up and become a positive con contributor to his community. That's worth a lot to me. Go down. Sure, he tells you to, to be to stick to the laws. I don't have the truth, blah, blah, blah. So Samson blasts him from time to time. <laughs> but it's always brotherly. That goes to your brothers. I am proud of you, my guy, Samson T. Judah. You have a testimony for demonstration. That's an example of the word of God. That's the most size of the world for that one. <laughs> so he's that light that shines in a dark place. Down through was the worst. The guy said he was the worst of the worst. I don't know if Samson like that. I don't know. I, mean, I can't imagine being the worst of the worst. But the way he's changed, he's changed, yeah. Um, just want to make a quick point 
Could you pull up the definition of power and just read that scripture one more time? First uh, Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5. Mm -hmm. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. Stop right there. Um, I did a class for the, um, the, the known class, and I asked people, when you think of power, what pops up to your mind? Some people say wealth, money, being able to control people. Some people think it's Dragon Ball Z, a, a <laughs> plane that will grow in your hand, and that's power. But if you go back to the excerpt of the old dictionary that was pulled up, the power is the demonstration of what we as a people could do. Right. You understand? Having signs, literal things for people to see the way to change their lives is that power. Right. Now we're going to get the definition of power. Let me see if that's the one I want to go over. Uh, no, no, that's not it. Yeah. You go, go, to, um, go back to Google and just type in power definition. Yeah. And you're going to see one in the second definition, which is the greatest. Type in power definition. Power definition. Right there. That's the best one. That's it right there. Read number two. And this is exactly what the deacon just brought out. With all the demonstration, with having signs. Right. And it's saying in the scripture that we have power. But in this world, we're trapped to the carnal world. And we're not tapped into the spiritual world. What we, what this world gives you to be as power is defined differently as God. You mean that? Power. The capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others or the course of events. Yep. See, that's what the brother testimony was. I tried to reach this brother. I couldn't. But whatever these brothers told him, yeah, he lived to see 25. Because I was sure he wasn't going to live to see 25. That's so that's power. Mm -hmm. That's a demonstration of the power that we have now to influence and to change lives with this gospel. Mm -hmm. Right, all praise. Mm -hmm. You also have Brother Officer Uriel from Oklahoma. But one more camp, he's from Cali. He was, he was from a rough side, he, was, he lived a rough life. He does numerous videos on the OKC page, Oklahoma page, um, expressing that, going in the streets, reaching the people. People know him out there. All right? So he's another, another example of a life being turned around to the power and demonstration of God, as Rabbi Sahim just brought out. Let's get Wisdom of Psalm 12, verse 15. Wisdom of Psalm 12, verse 15. The Book of Wisdom of Solomon Apocrypha, chapter 12, verse 15. For so much then, as thou art righteous thyself, thy order is all things righteously, thinking it not agreeable with thy power to condemn him that have not deserved to be punished. Yeah. For thy power is the beginning of righteousness, hmm. and because thou art the Lord of all, it maketh thee to be gracious unto all. Yeah. For when men will not believe that thou art of a full power, thou showest thy strength, and among them that know it, thou makest their boldness manifest. Damn. Read 15 again from the top. Read 15 again. Verse 15. For so much, then, as thou art righteous thyself. The Mosai himself is righteous. Go ahead. Thou orderest all things righteous. The Mosai orders all things righteously. Yeah, the Mosai likes order. Go ahead. Thinking it not agreeable with thy power to condemn him that have not deserved to be punished. The Mosai won't harm you unless you deserve to be harmed. Go ahead. For thy power is the beginning of righteousness. Well, his power is the beginning of righteousness. Go ahead. And because thou art the Lord of all, it maketh thee to be gracious unto all. Go ahead. For when men will not believe that thou art of a full power. When men think that you're not, not, not powerful enough. Go ahead. Thou showest thy strength. Most I will show us strength how? And among them that know it. And among us that know his full power. Go ahead. Thou makest their boldness manifest. He makes our boldness manifest. The Most High shows this full power through his prophets. This goes back to what was in Psalm 5 and 1. They still have great boldness against those who what? Afflicted them. Was in Psalm 5 and 1 and 2. And among, among them that among them that know, that know it, what? His full power. Thou it says, thou makest their boldness manifest. Read on. Verse 18. But thou, master of thy power. 
judges with equity. With fairness, go ahead. And orders us with great faith. And does what? And orders us with great faith. And does what? And orders us with great faith. And he orders, puts us in order with great favor. That phrase, faithful image, that was favor. That was great favor. Go ahead. For thou mayest use power without will. Because God will use his full power when he wants to use it. When he feels like it. All right. Let's get Sirach 10 verse Ecclesiastes 10 verse 1. The book of Sirach chapter 10 verse 1. A wise judge will instruct his people. It's well ordered. Again. A wise judge will instruct his people. That's a leader, elder. Go ahead. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. The government of a prudent man is well ordered. Go ahead. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what man of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. So we'll see how much a judge or a leader has power to do to influence others, to either be righteous like him or wicked like him, one or the other. But a wise judge orders things correctly, he orders things righteously. The government of a prudent man is well ordered. So you get rank, officers, captains, bishops, deacons, all that comes from prudence, prudence, and wise discretion. Yeah, Isaiah 30, verse 20. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, tears, crying, go ahead. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Yeah. But thy eyes shall see thy teachers. Why? Because they'll be right in front of your face in them streets. Go ahead. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee. Saying, would you be in the world walking by us? Go ahead. Ignore us. Go ahead. Saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. That's right. Jake be so evil as hell in camp. They'll walk across the street. You still get a cup though. Why are you go to the street for? <laughs> they be mad. <laughs> Cover their ears. Put the headphones on. Throwing bottles at us now. That's a new thing now. Throw bottles at us. Throw Gatorade at them. Ah, Gatorade. That's a new. That's a new thing they're doing to us now. We don't. It don't matter. The word. The word's going out. So they're mad. The word's going out. It is what it is. Get Psalm 51 verse two. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 2. One, yes, Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verse 2. Wash me through me from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Yeah. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned. Because this is after David had committed adultery with um, Bathsheba's, um, well, he killed Uriah at this time. So at this point, he's asking the Lord to forgive him. Go ahead. And done this evil in thy sight. Right, he had Uriah killed for his wife. Go ahead and took her. Go ahead. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judges. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thy desire is truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Pure, go ahead. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Right, afflict me, go ahead. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Forgive me, go ahead. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Don't, don't make me reprobate, don't make me reprobate, go ahead. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I then, teach. Once, you, once you've done that, then go ahead. Then will I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. And sinners shall what? And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Once I teach the transgressors, they shall be converted unto you. They'll return to the righteous paths to, to sinners. They'll be converted to you. Get Psalms 19, verse 7. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Once I've done those things you mentioned earlier. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, 
converting the soul. The law does what? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. What happened? The law is powerful. The law converts the soul. Converts the soul. All right. Let's get um next book, Ancient Greece and Rome. Ancient Greece and Rome. On page ninety-nine. <coughs> uh, we're gonna start with the uh, ethics. Take your time, we're going kind of fast. Ethics. Judaism was a religion with emphasized ethics. Uh -huh. The Bible contained not only particular rules and regulations, but general ethical principles for men to follow. Go on, look at the definition of ethics. It's not really a Negro word. <laughs> ethics. Definition of ethics. Google definition of ethics. I think that word means. The definition of ethics. One. Moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. Go back to that power again. Back to the laws. Read again. Moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. Number two. Two. The branch of knowledge that deals with moral principles. Well, yeah, the branch of knowledge that deals with moral principles. That go read the next one. A set of moral principles, especially ones relating to or affirming a specific, specified group, field, or form of conduct. That goes right back to laws and commandments of God. That's the ethics the Bible provides. Go back to the book now. Basically, it's referring to laws. Judaism was, was uh, emphasized on laws. Ethics. Judaism was a religion which emphasized ethics. The Bible contained not only particular rules and regulations, but general ethical principles for men to follow. The Greeks, to be sure, were also concerned with discovering the proper standard for human behavior. But their gods did not provide such rules for them. Their God had no rules. Okay. The Jewish God, however, was above all an ethical God who established standards for men to follow. These standards were recorded in the Bible and did not have to be discovered by contemplation or reason. Right, the Bible was common sense. <laughs> he, he didn't have common sense. Go ahead. They were commands of God. So our ethics were the commands of God. There you go. Go ahead. Therefore, the God who created and controlled the forces of nature, the divine power who raised the storm and sent the thunder, also provided the rules by which man ordered his life. Worship and ethics were joined to a degree which would have astounded both Stoics and members of mystery religion. No, it says the order provided rules by which the man ordered his life. Ordered his life. Okay? Sense of history. A sense of history. Perhaps the most unique element of Judaism was the concept of history. Ah, this is the best part. It's going to get good now. So, the sense of history, perhaps Judaism is a physical term to not this garbage now. Real, true Judaism. Go ahead. The Jews believed that God had made an agreement with them called a covenant. True. His covenant stated that if the Jews would worship only God and follow his commandments, he would give them a great nation. The Jews therefore directed their attention to the course of human events in order to seek the fulfillment of this promise. Thus, Judaism was a historical religion. So Judaism is a historical religion. So empires are based upon events that were going to lead to what? Us becoming a great nation. Go ahead. Deeply concerned with both past and future. And what, 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 read again. Deeply concerned with both past and future. And filled with the concept of change. And filled with what? The concept of change. Conversion, conversion, conversion. Filled with the concept of change. The Bible is filled with the concept of change. Change, change. Go ahead. The Greek view of the world is not historical in this deep sense. Both Plato and Aristotle sought the eternal and unchanging elements of the world. Let no, no, that go. Get page 100. No, 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 no. Go back, go back, go back, go back to that. Go back to that. I have something good there. Read again. Read the, the Greek view. The Greek view of the world is not historical in this deep sense. The Greek view, they, they, they weren't that smart. Go ahead. Both Plato and Aristotle sought the eternal and unchanging elements of the world. 
Thucydides, the greatest of the Greek historians, was primarily concerned with the history of his own time, not of ages past. There is no history of Greece written by an ancient Greek. The Old Testament, however, is primarily a history of the Jews from the time of their origins, showing how God chose them to play a major role in the history of the world. Damn! God, God chose to play a major role in the history of the world. The Greeks didn't got that, but they're liars. Some Greeks, some Greeks have no record of it because they weren't the real Greeks in the first place. That's East, East saw a that the real Greeks and took their nationality over. So they have no record of, of themselves. They're a bunch of apostles even then. Go to Judaism in perspective. Judaism in perspective. In spite of this gap between ideal and reality, the Jews were a people whose thinking was focused on change. And a people whose thinking is focused on change are most likely to brag about change if given the opportunity. Damn, we had it again, we from the top. <laughs> and Judy on. Judaism and perspective means. I'm going to give you, this, this guy is going to explain what Judaism does. Read it again. In spite of this gap between ideal and reality, the Jews were people whose thinking was focused on change. Yes, I was thinking at the time, and our right mind was focused on change. Go ahead. And a people whose thinking is focused on change are most likely to brag about change if giving the opportunity. Go ahead. Progress only comes if change is acceptable. Progress only comes if change is acceptable. If our people want change, progress happens. They don't want change, <coughs> we, did, we digress. Go ahead. In fact, Judaism contained many qualities which seem to be lacking in the prevailing ideal of the Hellenistic world. Meaning white European European um, Hellenist, uh, European nonsense. Europeanism. Europeanism, I'll say. That 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 lacked change. There's no change in that. It was garbage. Go ahead. This religion fused a dynamic religious. Go down. Next page is 101. Religious faith. Uh -huh. Religious faith and a system of ethics into a unified <laughs> view of life. So our, our understanding um, created a religious faith and a system of ethics into a unified view of life. Go ahead. The Stoics were strong on moral advice, but weak on religious fervor. Uh -huh. The mystery religions were powerful vehicles of religious ecstasy, but were for the oh, moment, the religious mystery religions were powerful vehicles of, of ecstasy, meaning of uh, of lust, enjoying the, the world, the lust of the world. Go ahead. But were for the most part lacking in rules for human behavior. There was gayness going on, bestiality going on, homosexuality going on. They didn't have rules for human behavior. You can do whatever you want to do. It was religious ecstasy, go ahead. In Judaism, both elements of humanity were combined. Oh, that was combined, go ahead. Judaism also produced a faith in a God who was demanding, transcendent, and powerful, yet at the same time was concerned with the daily affairs of men. This God was too majestic to be portrayed in even the best sculpture, yet a Hebrew writer could speak of walking with him. That's all I want. So not Damn. <laughs> I'm going to say something, DK. Yeah. You notice how the scripture says, in our religion, our main focus was on change. And a person that thought process is constantly based, is meditated on change, then they'll bring forth, eventually they'll bring forth change. And that's why you see in the Bible, all throughout the scriptures, the, the focal point is what? Repentance. Be born again. Being renewed of the spirit of the mind. Because why? And it says, all, the Bible also says to meditate day and night. And then thou shalt have good success. The good success is to be able to become that new person, be born again. Because it, it takes constant reinforcement in order to bring back, bring forth that change. Because Esau society is based upon influence in our thoughts. And in, th in your thoughts comes forth the actions. What the actions that they constantly implant in our mind? Sex, promiscuity, ecstasy, ha ecstasy. ecstasy yes, hatred. Low state, they, they implant in our minds low self esteem, which or poverty, you're nobody. So it's all these negative, adverse thoughts affects our our lives, and not only our lives, it brings forth those thoughts, brings forth the conditions in our community. 
That's why they focus on putting these negative adverse thoughts in our minds. And now it's in our community, it's a reflection of us. Because why? It's constant, it's consistent, it's every day. But the Bible is what? Change. Every, everywhere in the Bible is all change. Mm -hmm. That's the whole Esau pays psychologists thousands of dollars to do research on brainwaves, meditation. How, how, as a man thinketh, if you think you're going to be, that's why they influence the children from you. If you believe you're going to do that, guess what? You can do it. And they don't say, no, you're not going to do it like in Malcolm X. What do they say? You can't do that. You need. You could be this. But with their people, they say, you could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be anything you want. And they put things in place for them to achieve those goals. But us, they put roadblocks in our place. They put negative images because they understand image shapes our re can shape your reality if you give into it. So I think that was heavy. That um, this, like I said, that's our main focal point is change, and that should be everybody's focal point in here is focusing on change, change, change. How can you be a better person to um, tomorrow than you were yesterday? Every day we got to see. Okay, this is the level I am in right now. The next day, how can I get to another level? How can I get to the next level? And the Bible is the measure. Let me get that real quick. Ephesians 4 verse 13. <coughs> the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Unto a perfect man. Mm -hmm. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Read that again. Till we all come in the unity of the faith mm -hmm. and of the knowledge of the Son of God. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. This knowledge pertaining or consistent of Christ. Me and Christ showed us how to walk. He showed us how to talk. How he showed us how to deal with one another. He showed us how to deal in a marriage the way how he dealt with the nation. So until we come to the knowledge of the Son of God, because remember, our whole, the whole point, our whole goal, and the person that we're all trying to measure up to is the Son of God, Christ. Because we was made in what? God's image, right? And being made in God's image, that not, it's not only it's the physical aspect, but the mental aspect as well, as well. He says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Our thoughts has to conform to God's thoughts. So in coming to the knowledge of the Son of God, we have to see how did Christ think? How was he able to combat certain sins when it was, when it was presented towards him? You read that in Matthew chapter 4. Certain sins would approach Christ. How do you deal with these sins? How did Christ deal with these sins? How did he talk to people that was contrary to the gospel? How did he deal with people that have mental um, disabilities? How did he deal with people that have de depression? How did he deal with his family members? How did he deal with his brothers and sisters? So we come to the full knowledge of the Son of God. Read on. Unto a perfect man. Unto a what? A perfect man. That's all my goals, to what? Become a perfect man. Read. Unto the measure. Unto the measure. What is a measure? If I measure up to something, what am I doing? If, I, if I'm going to fill this water to, um, in a measure cup, there's, it, there's, there's a metric system in a measure cup, right? You have ounces. You have cups. Now, when you pour that water in it, there's a certain level that you're trying to reach, right? You have ounces. You have one cup, two cups. So I want to fill my cup up into the measuring line, which is two cups. So to read that part again. Unto the measure of the statue, stature of the fullness of Christ. And in that change, our goal is to measure up to the stature and the fullness of Christ. In order to reach the stature and fullness of Christ, in order to promote change, we have to apply the laws daily, day by day, one law at a time we're applying. And every time we're applying, uh, that measuring cup is reaching into the fullness and the stature and the perfection of Jesus Christ. And the white man pays thousands of dollars. And this is something that was given to us. Like Plato, Aristotle, they read they, these things, they have to reason it on it because God didn't give us that. God searched out all the ways of knowledge and gave it to who? Jacob, his servant. We don't have to think. That's what the Bishop Kai says. You don't have to think. Esau has to think. They have to do scientific studies. They have to go to psychology school. They have to study brain waves. Okay, this person thought like this. Why is he depressed? Let's study his brain wave. Why can't he sleep? The Bible says, this is why he's depressed. You are you sin. Sin no more. It's that simple. You don't have to think. All we got to do is apply, 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 and follow the guidelines. To add what you say, uh, to what you're saying, Pat. <coughs> and this will let you know when the devil is in your face. What I mean by that, today you're talking to a brother in the camp, 
he was like, think for yourself. Because everything he said, I was going to the Bible. He said, think for yourself. That's supposed to tell you when you're dealing with the devil. Like Captain said, we don't have to think for ourselves. This is plug and play. Once you follow the laws of God, you good. Now, if I'm gonna be a fool, I'd rather be a fool for God. I don't. He said, I don't need to think for myself. Apply the laws, and we're gonna get to that level that we expect it to be. Like Captain said. of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit 